The president's supposed to be a man of the people. So every once in a while, the leader of the free world or a candidate for the office drops by a late night TV show just to remind us, hey, I'm a regular guy. They schmooze it up with a comedian, crack a few jokes, enjoy a good roast, and even let their hair down a little. Can I mess your hair up? Go ahead, <laughs> with my hair spray. For years, the late night stopover has been a presidential staple. Republican, Democrat, doesn't matter, because comedy is bipartisan, or it's supposed to be. You can have Jimmy Fallon playing around with Trump on one show and slow jamming the news with Barack Obama on another. There will be no third term. I can't stay forever. Besides, Daddy's got a Hawaiian vacation booked in about. 223 days. But who's counting? If comedy isn't your thing, don't worry. We have a couple presidents who know how to drop a wicked baseline. It wasn't just the smooth stylings of Slick Willie or the classical pedigree of Richard Nixon that made these presidential cameos part of TV history. It was the fact that they made themselves the butt of the joke. Oh, no. I don't think we could get Mr. Nixon to stand still for a socket to me. Socket to me? <laughs> Nixon isn't the only one with a sense of humor. George Bush had a good laugh when giving us the top 10 things he wanted to do as commander-in-chief. Number seven. Hmm? Make sure the White House Library has lots of books with big print and pictures. <laughs> <laughs> Number six. Just for fun, issue executive order commanding my brother Jeb to wash my car. <laughs> Presidents come alive on late night, or at least they used to. What was once an exciting and dynamic event just hit the snooze button last night. Our napper in chief, Joe Biden, sat down with Jimmy Kimmel yesterday, and let's just say it was not must see TV. Even though the show was taped at three in the afternoon, it looked like President Biden was up way past his bedtime. Joe wasn't witty or articulate like his predecessors. He was boring, bland, and couldn't even get a sentence out. So there's a lot of major things we've done, but what we haven't done is we haven't been able to communicate it in a way that is, uh, um, let me say another way. Well, see, that's kind of perfect. Yeah, well, we haven't been able to communicate but it. Look, <laughs> look at the irony there. He can't even communicate how the administration's failing at communicating. And if Biden really cared about getting his message out, Maybe he'd pick a more challenging arena for his first sit-down interview in four months instead of taking softballs from a comedian. But that's just common sense, and we know Joe doesn't have any. Instead, he just keeps insisting everything's going great, even though that's a total lie. We have the fastest-growing economy in the world, the world, the world. We're the strongest economy, and that's allowed us at least to stay on top of and a little bit ahead of what's happening around the world. I hate to break it to you, Joe. The economy isn't growing. It actually shrank last quarter, and we're in a bear market. And that wasn't the only time Joe had trouble keeping his facts straight. But he was in friendly territory, so Kimmel wasn't about to call out his lies. So Joe just said whatever he wanted with impunity. It's got to be one of those issues where you decide your position on the issue of senator or candidate for House or Senate on what we're going to do on us with assault weapons and how have to have, maybe they'll have 300 rounds in a magazine. 300 rounds in a magazine? No such magazine exists. Even Tommy guns and their little drum mags couldn't hold a third of that. I guess he's just making things up which unfortunately wasn't the case for his comments on Roe v. Wade potentially being overturned. Listen. 
it's clear that if, in fact, the decision comes down the way it does and these states impose the limitations they're talking about, it's going to cause a mini revolution. It's sad to say, but Joe, your little mini revolution has already started. So much for dialing it back. Protesters have descended on the private homes of Supreme Court justices, and Brett Kavanaugh's life's already been threatened. More on that later. It looks like Biden's hardline language is having an immediate effect on his supporters. Just don't ask him to do anything about it or condemn their actions because he's too busy targeting Republicans. I often get asked, look, the Republicans don't play it square. Why do you play it square? Yeah. Well, well guess what? If we do the same thing they do, our democracy will literally be in jeopardy. It's like you're playing Monopoly with somebody who, you know, won't pass go and won't follow any of the rules. And how do you ever make any progress if they're not following the rules? Well, you got to send them to jail, uh, you know. <laughs> well, it didn't take long for Biden's message to reach the FBI. This morning, the feds arrested Ryan Kelly the leading Republican candidate in the Michigan governor's race. Kelly was targeted by the FBI for being outside the Capitol on January 6th. But the timing's suspicious. As the Democrats are gearing up for their primetime January 6th spectacle tonight. Look, I know Biden was probably joking, but can you imagine if Trump had talked about sending his opponents to jail like that? All hell would have broken loose. The media would have turned it into a full-blown crisis. Instead, the left is turning a blind eye as Republicans get thrown in prison. While the FBI sets up fake kidnapping stings against Gretchen Whitmer. So that's why it was no surprise that Biden's cameo last night was a total flop. He sat down with a Democrat activist, took some softball questions, and called it a victory. But not before getting a pat on the back for how tough of a job he has it. What a terrible job you have. I mean... <laughs> What? A, I'm glad you're doing it, but boy, oh boy, does this seem well, like a bad you know, gig. That wasn't an interview. It was a pity party. There were no real questions or actual answers. It was just two Democrats sitting around, refusing to accept responsibility for their party's massive failures. Maybe next time Joe sits down for a one-on-one, -on -one, he'll do it with an actual journalist, like me. <laughs> or at least do it on a late-night show people actually watch. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.